Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, sponsored you by Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And we are going to have a cool trade video today. Uh, I've been doing all kinds of, I did JT Miller, we did Price, we did Giroux, we did all the big names that are coming up to the deadline. Now, this one in particular we're going to be doing is probably not going to be a deadline deal. It may not be a deal at all, but I'm going to look at a, uh, from the Chicago, from a Chicago newspaper, an article that explains that Chicago Blackhawks are in a rebuild. Now, that could be a lot of things. Uh, it makes you wonder what is going to happen from here. And not only that, they said they're going to do it the right way. We'll look at it. If To do a rebuild the right way, you're going to have to trade some pretty big players. And today, we're going to be looking at Patrick Kane. This one's tough. This one's hard. It is also a difficult to find a place for him to go. There's several things that are going to have to go with this. He's got a complete no movement clause. Okay. $10.5 million for next year. And he can basically choose where he wants to go. So getting a return is going to be a little bit difficult. Um, they got to kind of hope that he'll give him a couple teams that he would go to. They're going to have to have a discussion about this too. They're I think they're going to have a really good sit down with Taze and Kane and express the direction that they're going. And probably in sort of a way say, I think it would be best for the organization if you opened up your no trade clause and allowed us to do this rebuild. It really doesn't make sense to me at all that you would keep Kane and Taze here uh, for the long run. Uh, maybe more Taze because Taze value is probably a little lower. But Kane, as we'll see, because we're going to look at Kane's numbers and contract and all of those sort of things. Kane, I think there's a lot of value there. He's still a 90 to 100 point player. He's going to be possibly a 90 point player this year on a fairly weak Chicago team. So if they can convince him to do so, we're going to look at four teams. I could only come up with four. I usually do five. Four teams that probably would show some interest and in what the return might be if this deal were to go down. Pretty interesting. So first of all, we're going to look at the uh, article in question, as I see here. It comes from the Chicago Sun-Times. The Chicago Times, straight from the newspaper. Uh, it, the title is, With Blackhawks Now Firmly, Kyle Davidson's team rebuild will be in earnest. Notice, in earnest. We're going to look at more of a rebuild here, Davidson said Tuesday in his introduction as the Hawks' permanent general manager. There are some things we really need to fix that are going to take time. So the rebuild is going to take time. The Blackhawks are Kyle Davidson's now. He's going to run the team his way, and it's going to be by starting over. We're going to look at more of a rebuild here, uh, as we just said. We really need to do this the right way. We're going to stick to the plan, take our time with it, and make sure that when we get to where we want to go, it has the result of a plan that is stuck to and not deviated from. Okay, there was another general manager that said we're going to do it the right way, and that was Armstrong from the Arizona Coyote. And we know, I think you know, if you don't know, he tore it right down. He went right down bare bones, and he's going to build that team up with draft picks and all of those sort of things to, to make this a long-term plan. Also, the Detroit Red Wings, Stevie Eisenman said the same thing before he still started selling off his veterans. As I mentioned, Kane does have a no-movement clause. Um, so he would have to be, he would have to okay this. Now, I simple, I simply think it's going to be very, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think Kane is hurt. I lo love Chicago, of course. Uh, he's been there. He's won cups there. He's built his roots there. Very difficult conversation that they're going to have with Patrick Kane. 
And in the end, if Patrick Kane chooses to stay, I suppose you just have to work around that. But I think they're going to make make it pretty clear that it would be best for the organization if he moved on. So let's look at Patrick Kane as a whole. Uh, 10.5 million. This is what's difficult. Also, like I said, that I don't believe this will be a deadline deal. This will be, and if you're all uh, interested in these type of trade talks and stuff, please sub up, sub yourself up, get involved, uh, comment in the comment section, all of those sort of things like that. It's a lot of fun. But 10.5 million. Now, if Chicago is really clearly in the path of doing a rebuild, it's only one year. They don't have to worry about their cap issues. I have a feeling, I would say even more so, I think it's quite likely that they would be retaining money on this $10.5 million for the one year. If they were to do that, I think we have a lot of people, a lot of teams here that may be interested um, for sure. And they might even get some pretty decent value. Now, how is... How is, uh, Chicago, how is Chicago going to get value? Well, they don't really have to trade Kane, too, right? They could just hold out, go to free agency, not sign him, use the cap space other ways. There's other things that they can do. They could also wait for the trade deadline next year. Possibly then he may think to go a different direction. But Kane has gotten 65 points in 55 games this year. Last year, he's on the same pace as last year. Now, we know that he's on the older side. He is now, I believe, 33 going on 34 years old. So, But he's showing no sign of letdown. He's actually getting somewhat better. He had 84 points in 70 games in 2019-20. Um, that he's on more of a pace now than he was then. So he's actually improving offensively. He's not a great defensive player, never has been, but his offense more than makes up for it. He's also has three cups, a veteran, knows how to win, all of those sort of things like that. So we're going to look at some teams, and all of these teams are, uh, all of these teams are sort of contenders. I think it would have to be a contender. I don't think he's going to go. There's been talk about he's from Buffalo and all of that. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. If he's going to get traded, I'm sure he's going to want to go somewhere where he has a chance to win a cup right now. So we're going to start off. First team, the New York Islanders. And I know, I have a feeling New York Islanders fans are going to get very upset with the prospect of this happening simply because they have so many old players like Kyle Palmieri. Uh, they went and got Parise last, last year. They got Chara. They have Chara. They're getting older, and they're getting older fast. But they're also not in a position to get much younger either without being not a contender anymore. And I just don't see the Islanders stopping here. I, th I see them trying to get better and better. Also, I've mentioned this several times, that Matthew Barzal would do much better if he had a creative player to play with. Uh, let's look at the uh, depth chart of the New York Islanders. Now, we know there's going to be cap space, but we know also, we think we know anyways, that they're likely going to retain on this deal. So right now, and... Barzal's hurt right now. He would be playing with guys like Anders Lee, Beauvillier, Josh Bailey. These are not the most creative players anymore. No, no disrespect or at all. No disrespect to Anders Lee, but he is in a big way no respect, no disrespect, because the type of game he plays is a very physical, tough, grinding type game that is difficult to play and hard to find. However, they just don't have Kyle Palmieri go straight to the net. Not a creative player, really, at all. Josh Bailey used to, but it's starting to uh, fade for Josh now. So, what would the return be? Well, they'll retain five and a half million, I would say. Five million. Five and a quarter million. Um, and I know they're, they're, caught, they're right up to the cap. So, you could have a guy like Josh Bailey involved in this deal. 
for Chicago, that's not really turning the needle. That's really just a move to for cap space. So really, it's not a value there for Chicago. So they're going to need to add more players and more prospects for that to happen. Now, the thing about Josh Bailey, though, is apparently he's an incredible room guy. And we all know what's gone, what happened in Chicago that uh, with – the all situation, the morale in the room and everything there is probably not all that great. Um, by the way, if you are an Islanders fan, if you are a hockey fan, sub yourself up and be part of this fine content on a regular basis. I'd love to have you. Um, so I, th I think Josh Bailey could be part of this deal just for the character aspect alone. And then you'd be looking at prospects. Maybe somebody like Sebastian Ajo would get a chance there. Their first round pick and uh, like Michael Del Cole. And you say, well, that's not that much. You're right. It's not that much. But Chicago doesn't have, if you're a, it's not that much to give up for a guy like Patrick Kane. But if you are um, an Islanders fan, you have to realize that, or a Chicago Blackhawks fan, I should say, you have to realize that they don't have much leverage. He's got to choose to go here. Now, he's from Buffalo, so this would be a little closer. And I think for the most part, they're going to be trying to make Patrick Kane happy. So if he wants to go there, they can just go to them and say, look, we need at least a first. We'll go with Josh ba Bailey for his character. Maybe somebody like Sebastian Ajo. Uh, give it a shot. See how he does there in Chicago. He's been kind of... Uh, Robin Salo, possibly, and give Michael Del, Del Cole a shot. So you got some prospects, a first-round pick, and the New York Islanders would have their guy to play with Barzal while he's in the lineup and Anders Lee. Kane, Barzal, and Anders Lee is a fantastic number one. Um, you lose Bailey, Kiefer Bellows needs more of a shot. You just got to go with them, simple as that. Um He's 23 years old. He was a, a first-round pick. And it's time for these guys like Oliver Wallstrom and Kiefer Bellows to get an opportunity to step up and become more of a factor if for, for the New York Islanders. They do need to get younger. And I know that Kane is not getting younger here. But he's got three cups. He's a monster still offensively. The Islanders have problems scoring, let's face it. So I think they could. I think they would be looking at that. Lamorello uh, likes his veterans, of course, as we can, as you know. And uh, but this is a veteran that can actually give you ninety to hundred points. Tell me what you think, Islanders fans. Do you think they would be willing to give up something like that? Possibly Semi and Barlamov as well. They're not going to need that, go, uh, that him next year. He could be there instead of Bailey to make the numbers work. And Chicago's going to need a goaltender with Flurry being gone anyways. Something to look at there as a possibility as well. All right, let's go to the next team, the Boston Bruins. Now, the Boston Bruins are in a situation basically where they are not rebuilding as of yet, but they're probably not in, and I think all you Boston fans who are about to sub up to my channel right now and get these trade videos more often uh, will say that they're also not really in the contender stage either. And they have somebody named Jake DeBrusque who has been asking for a trade now for quite some time. Um, I think they may hold on to him through the deadline. I doubt very much they're going to get much value back for him at the deadline right now with who they would be able to trade him to because a team that would take him more than likely is not going to be giving up a veteran back. Uh, that would be, unless they're going to go to somebody like Detroit or something like that, and he's just working on getting his value up again. Now, if they could be having Kane discussions, and they know that in the offseason, if they keep Jake DeBrus, they can tell Jake DeBrus, look, just get through the season here. Let's see if we can what we can do this year. Next year, we got a deal in place that you can go to Chicago. He's making 3.67 now. And uh, again, if you didn't hear from, if you didn't listen to the Islanders one or all the way through the video here, 
I believe Chicago will retain half the salary here in order to get max return. So they could get Jake DeBrusque, who they would have to sign. They should have the cap space to give him, after, give it, get, after getting rid of Kane, to give him a little more money and give him a shot. And possibly the first round pick, something of that nature. And you say, well, that's not enough for Kane. But again, as I said, they, he's really going to need to um, go to where he wants to go. They are going to probably have him go where he wants to go. He's from Buffalo. It's not far away from Boston. It's closer to home. He's got a chance to make a difference here, playing an incredible line. Marshawn Bergeron and Kane or Pasternak, and he can play down with uh, wh whoever they get for a center, which I still think they would have to do rather than Hola. But, and maybe they, and, uh, and uh, I'm sure Boston will be looking towards something like that. But this gives them a guy with three cups as well, uh, incredibly more leadership. And what's Boston's problem been a lot of the time? It's been a little better as of late. But goal scoring, especially depth scoring, has been the main problem here. It's just reason why, you know, Jake DeBrusque, they haven't been happy with Jake DeBrusque. He's been very inconsistent offensively. And the fact is, they need offense, and they need offense now. Other guys that you might look at is uh, Jack Ashan. Uh, he, he scored his first goal last night. Uh, looks like he's going to be a, a good defenseman. They can go down into their depth chart. I, I, I If I'm Chicago, I'm looking at a guy like Oscar Steen. I really like him a lot. Um, like um, Maybe that. Uh, Oscar Steen, the first in DeBrusque, if they can get that much out of Boston, considering they really don't have all that much leverage because Kane has a no movement clause, and they're really going to want to take care of Kane. He gave them a lot in their organization. It it doesn't do well for an organization to mistreat legends like this for the fact that you're going to eventually want free agents and signing your young players to long-term contracts. If you mistreat guys like Kane, they go, well, do I want to really sign? And certainly do I want to take a discount for an organization who also has had the problems we know of there in Chicago with the past and all of that that's gone on. They already are trying to rebuild that pride in their organization. So might not cost as much as you think to get a guy like Patrick Kane. Next, the St. Louis Blues. And uh, again, first thing everybody's going to say about this, and St. Louis Blues fans, if you like this trade content, sub yourself up because I do this on a regular basis. Got lots of different ones that I've been doing. JT Miller, Price, all the big names, all the time. Uh, but the reason why I took the St. Louis Blues is nobody's talking about it anymore. But from what I understand, Vladimir Tarasenko is still looking to be traded. He doesn't trust the organization because of some sort of medical stuff that was going on. Uh, the way they treated his injury and all of that. And uh, he's being very patient, but from what I understand, it's not over. He really does want to move on. So he would be a free agent in 2023. He should get good value anyways out there on the market. Um, so it's possible he wouldn't be a part of this deal. But also, the St. Louis Blues could use somebody like Kane. Three cups. Legend, 90 to 100 point player still at the age of 34 years old, uh, would be amazing to play with O'Reilly and Shen or Thomas and Kyrou and would help guys like Kyrou, Kyrou and Thomas immensely with all the knowledge that he's picked up and the type of game he has to help them become better players as well. Tarasenko makes 7.5. So in this case, if Tarasenko was part of this deal, they would not have to really take us Chicago to give up too much money, to retain too much money either. They wouldn't have to. They could, though. And if they did, then they would probably have to give up even a little more here. Since Tarasenko was asked to be traded anyways, the leverage is a little 
not that great. Now, I don't think Chicago would keep Tarasenko here. In this case, I think there would be a three-way trade involved where Tarasenko goes to Chicago, they get Kane, and <clears throat> the good part about this deal for, for St. Louis is if they got Tarasenko, um, Kane will likely have to ex will have to accept the trade. So he's going to have to say, okay, I'm okay with going to St. Louis. I'm happy with going to St. Louis. <laughs> has to be one of the teams he chooses. And he's got an ironclad no movement clause, so he can go wherever he wants. Does he want to go to St. Louis? I'm not sure. But if he's willing to accept it, I think you could all, you could do a straight across deal here. Tarasenko for Kane. St. Louis gets huge value. They're going for a cup right now. Like this is a team that is, I believe, they believe it is a very, a worthy cup contender. Now you could trade Tarasenko somewhere else, probably get prospects and a, and a lesser player in return. But when you're going to get, uh, if you can get a 90 to 100 point player for him, when he's definitely going to be on the way out, and then Chicago can use Tarasenko anywhere because he said that he would be happy anywhere although he he did put uh, i think he put, uh, uh, put in a five team no trade clause but they have more options with tarasenko so they call around the league say hey do you like tarasenko and they could probably get actually get more value from him than kane now you say well chicago can get more value from him for kane yes but they can't get kane with them Seems like a fit that might just work there, boys and girls. Tell me what you think, St. Louis Blues fans. What would you think of if Tarasenko had to go anyways, getting a legend like Kane who can put up 90 to 100 points and go through the whole video in the beginning of this video I show you where he doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. Would you like to have a Kane or there, man? Would you like to have a three-cup, 90 to 100-point player to play with all these already fantastic offense you have, and then, you know, probably work on the defense as you go. Um, next, finally, the Florida Panthers. Now, I know everybody's going to say here, uh, Florida Panthers are going to say here, they don't need offense. They need defense. Well, I'm sure they're going to work on that. The Florida Panthers do have a little bit of cap space to work in other areas as well. Now, in this deal... I would say that Chicago retains five and a half million. And this is, again, this is not happening at the deadline. So we're looking at probably in the off season. So if Florida goes through here, has a, depending on what they do in the playoffs, it's quite possible that they could identify if they, if you look at their lineup here, that they are uh, missing that one more cup guy. You know, they got Patrick Hornquist, but he doesn't really play high minutes. That top-notch three-cup legend. Imagine Kane playing with Barkov and Verhege. Wow. It would be absolutely unreal. Now, what would the return be? I'm going to say Ant start off with Anthony Duclair at $3 million for the next couple of years. He would basically be rendered useless on this lineup if they were to pick up somebody like that. He's fairly young. Chicago is talking about a complete rebuild here. So a 26-year-old Duclair wouldn't be a bad guy to get back in return. You gave up $5.5 million, so if you're worried about cap space, there's $3 million of it right there. Another guy that I think that could be on, because you got Alexei Hepinanemi, Gregory De De uh, Denisenko. I'm hearing Owen Tippett is on the market right now, but if they don't, you have him to make room for. They could actually give up another forward in this deal, and that forward I would say I would like if I was Chicago is Frank Vetrano. Uh, Frank Vetrano, if he played higher up in a lineup, I see him as a 20 to 25 goal guy. Um, 27 years old. He's still fairly young. Uh, Florida could afford to give him up. And they get a legend, a three-cup legend to be able to help them in their cup goal, to, to teach, to show these guys what it means to be a champion. You can't get much better guy than that. Um, 
to, uh, to, to bring that much value to a team. Now, again, Kane would have to agree to go to Florida. I don't know if that would be something he'd be interested in doing. I do believe Florida is a, definitely a cup, cup contender. Um, this would make their offense absolutely insane. You wouldn't have to give up the first round draft pick, I don't think. Maybe a, a prospect like Matt Kirstead on the back end, uh, who is a good college kid that's working his way up, will probably be a 5'6 defenseman. And the reason why you won't have to give up all that much more than this is because, again, Chicago really doesn't have that much leverage in this, in this spot. Uh, he, Kane can basically identify where he wants to go. They can't go all over the league trying to trade him anywhere they want. He, he's got a complete no-movement clause. So they're going to be limited to where he wants to go. And there's something else here, too. If you're Kane, do you want to really hurt your team that you're going to that much? Like, I think that he's going to try to make it so he actually the team he's going to doesn't give up all that much, especially off their roster, to give it a shot. So tell me what you think, Florida Panthers fans. Would you like a guy like Kane? Do you think it's possible that that could even happen? Um, and I'll be sending this out to my sh the Chicago fans out there as well. Tell me what you think about this return for Kane. Is it no good? Which should you just rather keep him and help with the rebuild or send him off to other lands so you can get more prospects and do the rebuild as Mr. Davidson or Davidson said the right way. That's my full 42. Sub yourself up. Take this content. You get this content on a regular basis. Hit the bell so you can see it come up. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think there. Tell me if you think that uh, what it, the whole situation with Chicago, actually. It's a very interesting one. It's going to be a challenging rebuild there. Let's see where it goes. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.